Happy Sunday and welcome to another episode of Collider Mailbag or how or how it's known nowadays Sunday Game of Thrones Collider Mailbag. How's it going? <laughs> I am your host John Roca. I am so excited to welcome to the show another new person here to Collider Mailbag. That is Ashley Victoria Robinson. How are you, Ashley? I'm so good. I'm so excited to talk Game of Thrones. I could not contain my giggles over your introduction. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've seen Ashley on Heroes. You've seen her on the and you've listened to her on the Game of Thrones. What the Thrones podcast with Dennis Zeng. And last week we started our recap and review of the Game of Thrones episodes here on Collider and Ashley has been great on those podcasts and was great on the show as well. Are you excited for tonight? Are people going to die? What's your thoughts? I'm 100% sure someone's going out tonight. <laughs> I think it's just a matter of whether or not it's any of our favorite characters and as someone whose favorite character is Theon Greyjoy, I'm deeply concerned. Oh <laughs> yeah, that's certainly possible. Reek finally getting no. his end. Maybe we'll see. But that's that's for later on tonight, and we'll plug it at the end of the show. Remember, these questions come from you, the fans, the awesome Collider fans. Uh, you send them to us when we put the call out on social media, on Twitter, and on Instagram. That hashtag Collider Mailbag helps it easy. It makes it easy for me to find. And of course, you can also email us if you hate social media or don't like social media, <laughs> don't want to go near it. Who can blame you? You can do it on email mailbag at collider.com. I pour through those questions, pick out like 20 to 25, send them to my guest. My guest picks out five that they really are excited to talk about and we've got five really good ones for today. Ashley, are you ready? I think so. <laughs> All right, let's do this thing. This our first one comes from Instagram and it's Kevin.Samaru. He asks, with the return of Game of Thrones, if you can have anyone make a cameo, who would you choose and as what? I'd love to see Gerard Butler as a Golden Company warrior with an epic battle scene. Thanks for taking my question. Uh, hashtag Clyde Malvick, hashtag Winter is here. All right, Ashley Victoria Robinson, yes. what are your answers to this one? It's really tough because I was expecting a lot more Lord of the Rings cameos after oh, we had Sean yeah. Bean playing Ned Stark. Um, if people are familiar with me, they know how much I love Lord of the Rings. It's my favorite fictional thing. Mm -hmm. I thought for a long time John Noble would have played Walder oh, Frey, yeah. uh, Denethor from Lord of the Rings, Walter Bishop from Fringe. I thought he was really, really fabulous. Mm -hmm. um, if we could have had a longer time with Rhaegar and Lyanna, mm. I think there could have been some really interesting casting possibilities there. I would have loved to see, he's too old, but I think like Justin Thoreau would have been a really great Rhaegar. Oh yeah, someone who's really charismatic, and you understand why they're a great leader. Mm -hmm. um, he's also a great writer, so I don't know. Maybe he could have written those scenes. I don't know. <laughs> maybe if we're if we're staying on the leftovers train, then it would have been really hilarious. Although I think she might have been a little too old. If Liv Tyler would have played Lyanna, also oh, Arwen in right. yeah. Lord of the Rings, they were on uh, leftovers together. But I think now with the season wrapping up, I don't know how many cameos we might have yeah. left, but yeah. sort of the whole Lord of the Rings cast came to mind for me, and then I was like, okay, so like, Billy Boyd could have been one of the reeds, and then Elijah Wood could have been a, a car Stark, and like, I, you could have cast the whole thing just off of that. Absolutely. Who comes uh, to mind for you? For me, these are more like fantasy castings. Yeah. Uh, Daniel Craig has, you know, he, he popped up in uh, The Force Awakens mm -hmm. as a stormtrooper, so obviously he is down to do cameos for properties or franchises that he likes. I think he'd be awesome in that armor, with a sword and mm -hmm. what have you. That leather armor, either the one that Jamie kind of struts around in. Wouldn't it be nice to see Daniel Craig as some kind of lord or something to do? Maybe one of the knights, uh, one of the uh, lords of the north, they're mm -hmm. sitting out there doing something or whatever. Would have been nice to have a little small cameo with him. I think Kate Winslet, if you could oh, really sure. get Kate, you could see her as a powerful lady of the house. Maybe a young Elena Tyrell in flashback would be fantastic. Would Kate awesome. Winslet, <laughs> right? Olivia Coleman is another one that comes to mind, especially on the heels of the favorite and all the stuff that she's been doing as a massive fan of Broadchurch. Mm -hmm. I would love to see Olivia and some, maybe Leanna, maybe Leanna Mormont in the future. Oh, maybe that'd be that's amazing. Olivia Coleman, you know. Uh, you can hire HBO, you can hire John at any time to show run your <laughs> Leanna Mormont grown-up show. Please, Leanna Mormont, please. Oh my God, that's the spin-off. Don't give me no prequel. Give me that. Uh, I hope she survives. God, if she dies tonight, I'll be broken. Mads Mikkelsen uh, also Ooh. would be fun. There's a lot of Danish, obviously, Urine Greyjoy. That actor mm -hmm. is, uh, you know, of that heritage. It would be nice to see Mads have a part in this at all as well. You know, he seems to have no problem doing Netflix movies. I would like to see him slide into the He would have been HBO fun stuff. as like Victorian or maybe oh, someone yeah. from Bravo so you could keep the accent and lean into that a little right, bit more. That right. would have been, he's a great choice. Yeah, right? It would have been fun to see I that. I see you have almost the entire cast of um, Casino Royale in your oh, choice. Oh, yeah, that's not... Oh, <laughs> shit. Well, fair point. I just got to call that in. I left the Dame Judy Dench off. I should have thrown her in there. All right. Well, uh, she can't see anymore, so that's it's okay. Right. Oh, yeah. We all love right. her. That's a, what's our second question, Ash? Our second question 
question comes from Twitter at Ryan RPM5 asks, Hey, Collider Crew, growing up in the 90s, I loved certain TV shows. My question is, what 90s property should be rebooted as movies or TV series? My picks are VR Troopers and Superhuman Samurai Cyber Squad. Ooh. Nice. That was, so those are, many words. Those are deep in there. Um, the two that come to mind for me are Gargoyles. Mm -hmm. I would love to see Gargoyles done in some way. I know Weissman brought back, uh, or, you know, thanks to the fans, uh, brought back a, a, a Young Justice yep. there on DC Universe. So wouldn't it be fun to see him get a shot at doing Gargoyles? A lot of people have some deep, deep love mm -hmm. for Gargoyle, Gargoyles. Uh, Yuri Lowenthal and I used to have that podcast, and we interviewed Greg like three separate times. Yeah. And every single time he got real deep about how much people love gargoyle so i'd love to see that come maybe in live action form or what have you seeing what they're able to do with motion capture now lately mm -hmm. wouldn't that be interesting and the other one i have is dexter's laboratory Ooh. i thoroughly thoroughly loved dexter's laboratory and i was a man of a certain age in the 90s and i still <laughs> enjoyed dexter's laboratory it was a nice palate cleanser for all the stuff that was going on in the 90s but i really enjoyed the, that kind of animation and that kind of humor between dexter and his sister and all that going on throughout that would be fun to see now i mean for we're getting another Inspector Gadget uh, film or yeah, possible series. Yeah. Can't we do something with Dexter's Laboratory first? Could even do it live action. Would definitely still work as a kid's film. What mm -hmm. do you think? Um, Xena always comes to mind. Oh, yeah. It's like sure. in the list of properties that if I had enough money, I would love to buy and reboot. And to do it properly and to lean into the things about the show that people love so much. Mm -hmm. um, this week, actually, uh, last Wednesday, a new Xena comic series dropped, uh, written by Vida Ayala. And it does, it's a little more brutal. It's mm -hmm. a little more queer. And I think if that's successful, then maybe we'll see that oh, happening. Um, we okay. know that the two stars are game for that, so I would love to see that. Also, I loved all the Nickelodeon slate mm -hmm. in the 90s, and I think Rocket Power is a tragically underrated show. It's the surfer show from okay. Hawaii, and I think it could be really fun in live action. Mm -hmm. You could have um, basically anyone who wasn't lost to be in it. Um, <laughs> you could also have The Rock cameo as their uncle. Oh, I wow. just think you could do a really cool updated version of that, and it's actually pretty cheap to shoot in Hawaii, which is kind of mind-blowing and incredible. It is. That's true. When I was down there for the set visit for Baywatch, mm -hmm. I think that's what it was down there. For. What was I down there for? Oh, either way, they took us around and they talked about it and they said, uh, no, it was for Jumanji. I was down uh -huh. there for Jumanji interviewing The Rock, Kevin Hart, and uh, uh, Jack Black, which you can see on Collider, that interview. But like being down there, they spoke about how so many productions come through Hawaii and they're surprised that not more come through because yeah. it's cheaper to shoot down there. And it's also beautiful. amazing. Yeah, yeah, it's beautiful. I get, I get the weather sometimes can be a bit wonky, but overall, that's a beautiful place to shoot. And if it's cheaper, I would set all my films in Hawaii yeah. if I was a director. <laughs> that's for damn sure. <laughs> all right, well, uh, let us know what 90s shows you want to do in the comments section below. See what you think. Well, some, what are the ones we missed? Let us know which ones are close to your heart. Let's move on to our third question. It's from Twitter. It's uh, at, at JPEG1098. He asks, what real-life person do you want to see get a biopic, and who would you cast as that person? My choice Choice is an outside of the box choice, which is Adam Devine as John Belushi. Wow. Uh, what comes to your mind, Ashley? Well, that's cool because I, I don't have to pretend I know who Adam Devine is. Um, <laughs> the person who, the project that comes to mind for me is something that was actually in the works and then I think has since fizzled out. It's a Brian Epstein biopic starring Benedict oh. Cumberbatch. Oh, wow. Yeah. So right after okay. um, The Fifth Estate dropped, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, right before Sherlock season three, uh, that was sort of shopped around, around the time that the fifth Beatle graphic novel came out and uh, yeah. Brian was sort of back in the zeitgeist in that way. I yeah. think he would be really, really fabulous in that part. I think he's probably a little too, I think he's older than Brian ever yes, was I now, he was, um, yeah. tragically, but I thought he would have been a really great choice. And since, you know, we've only got so many Beatles left, we got to get those movies in while the getting is good. Yeah, yeah. I mean, having come, having gone to Liverpool just recently yes. for the first time, uh, it is it is obviously very drenched in Beatles lore and mm -hmm. Beatles uh, mystique. And Brian Epstein is still very much someone people talk about in that area when yeah. they talk talk about the Beatles in the two museums I went into. He is very much featured there. So it would be, I think you're right. I think we're kind of slowly moving past as we get older, mm -hmm. past this idea of going back to revisit the Beatles. 
Yesterday, the Danny Boyle film is going to do that. I'm so, so excited to see that. Yeah, <laughs> I hope it does up. I'm kind of a quiet fan of Across the Universe, even though I know the storylines don't track throughout the movie. I still enjoy it. Hey, that's okay. I like Across the Universe, too. Yeah, there we <laughs> We're go. in good. this together. Good. good. <laughs> that but a Brian Epstein would be interesting. Uh, well, I'll tell you, as I was stumbling through this, Eleanor Roosevelt being played by Olivia Coleman came to mind. Amelia Earhart uh, being done by Jessica Chastain. I know uh, Amy Adams did a great job yes. in that at the Museum of mm -hmm. Amelia Earhart. I really liked her interpretation. But the one that hit me the most is Brad Pitt doing Ben Franklin. Who interesting. Uh, since Drunk History, I've always thought of Jack Black as the oh, ultimate yeah. Ben Franklin. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, the challenge, because I mean, we saw DiCaprio do J. Edgar Hoover. Yes. Would yeah. Brad Pitt be able, I can see him metamorphosizing with, I mean, we saw this with Gary Oldman as well, with Winston uh -huh, Churchill. Uh -huh. We could see him putting on a little bit more of the look of the weight and everything as he gets older. And then he'd have the randiness of it and the sarcasm. You know, Brad can play those mm -hmm. kinds of things. And I wonder if it's possible to see a Brad Pitt biopic, I mean a Ben Franklin biopic with Brad Pitt progressing through the years. I always wanted uh, Michael Dorn to play Willie Mays because in oh, the episode uh, Far Beyond the Stars, you know when they travel and mm -hmm. you think Deep Space Nine is that fake story, he plays like a Willie Mays adjacent character oh, and Michael Dorn hasn't aged. He could still no. do it. <laughs> Go yeah. for it. Black don't crack, that's what they no. say. Uh, <laughs> Will Ferrell was another one I thought to maybe do Bob Ross. Oh, bless! That would be so sweet. <laughs> I think I think that'd be great because Will has shown his dramatic chops when he gets the chance. Stranger mm -hmm. than Fiction, I really enjoyed yeah. him in that, and a couple of other dramatic turns he's made. I think he's done that uh, Woody Allen film that he did. I, I think he's got it within him. And Bob Ross is someone that people look at Ashley's reaction. People <laughs> love Bob Ross. We do. <laughs> Wouldn't it be fun to see Will kind of come back to prominence, especially after that Holmes and Watson debacle? Go back into prominence and maybe oh, kind of Holmes show and Watson, his. All right. yeah. <laughs> that was terrible. So horrible. Uh, all right, what's our next question, Ashley? Our next question comes from Andrew Kelso, who writes, Hey, Collider stick the landing is a phrase closely associated with TV series finales. What would the finale of Game of Thrones be to ensure a positive reception and what could the scenario be that would totally alienate the fan base? Keep up the great work. Oof. Thanks, Andrew. Yeah. Um, I'm going to defer to Ashley first on this one. <laughs> I, I think Ashley, as, uh, as a reader of the books and as doing the What to Throw podcast with Dennis, you tell me what do they need to do here to stick the landing? There's only five episodes left as mm -hmm. we go into recording this today. I think it's really tough with mm -hmm. finales of things that are this epic, like Breaking Bad, mm -hmm. like every time a doctor goes away. I think it is impossible in the current zeitgeist to please everyone. Right. And the question with Game of Thrones is, let's be honest, they're all going to die. It's whether or not your fave dies and whether or not they get a good ending, according mm -hmm. to you. I think the only way to make everyone happy is to have neither John nor Danny nor Tyrion wind up on the throne. Wow. I think it has to be bequeathing it to a new generation, mm -hmm. uh, particularly because we have the potential for doing a series that moves past this. Mm -hmm. So if we don't set that up well, if we just end this like the way Lord of the Rings ends, where you're like, well, this is it. We have saved the world. Yeah. There's limited potential for more storytelling. Mm -hmm. But I think the most, that's what I think the smartest thing to do. The way to please everyone is to put John and Danny on the throne together. You're right, right. So right. you cram them onto that one chair. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't know if Game of Thrones is in a position just because it enjoys the popularity it does and mm -hmm. the fan base is as vocal as it is, which is wonderful. I don't know if there's anything they can do where they will quote, stick the landing, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't mean that I don't think I'm not going to enjoy it, that we won't have great discourse about it. I right. just think it's such a phenomenon that your odds of pleasing everyone are just so much lower. That's a great point you bring up, Ashley. So you have them stick the King's Landing. Hey, oh, hey um, nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> but, but for me, it's, I think, I think you make fantastic points, Ash. Thank Can you. you satisfy everybody? Probably not. Should someone end up on the throne? I don't know. That'll divide the fan base. If you put John on the throne, then people will be like, oh, great. You know, a, a man resumes. If you put right. Danny on mm -hmm. the throne, like, is Danny the one that should be on the throne? Mm -hmm. Because she's shown those Targaryen impulses to set people on fire when they don't <laughs> adhere to her rules. Uh, should Tyrion be on the phone? He's, if thrown, he's shown himself to be kind of not a good hand of the queen over the last two seasons. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I tweeted about this earlier this week saying Lyanna should be on the throne, but it was like, how oh, is this going to happen? Oh, man. It, it, I loved reading the Comments to yeah, that the tweet. Comments <laughs> but like it's fun to, to, to fantasize Absolutely. who should be on the throne. Leanna to me should be on the throne. I know she's twelve, but she should be on the throne. You know she truly can't do any worse than Xerxes done. I mean, for God's <laughs> sakes. Uh, but the idea is if if the because I I said this also earlier, like if the White Walkers, I thought no one was going to throw the White Walkers is going to wipe uh -huh. everybody out. Then what do we have left? 
afterwards, right? Who, uh -huh. who, if does if nobody survives, and literally that's the end of the world. Yes. So what happens at that point? So I think uh, in the end, it, 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 it'll have to be an incredibly inventive ending uh -huh. to make it work, make it believable. Samwell has to play into this. The dragon mm -hmm. glass thing they've been teasing for multiple seasons yep. now. Now that everyone's going to have these weapons, I think it'll be an incredibly awesome battle. And maybe at the end, it'll surprise people who's standing, uh, uh, who's sitting on that throne, if anyone is sitting on that throne, and they have to, and this is the most important thing, I think, to stick the landing, mm -hmm. whether they get it right or not, Ashley, they have to stick to the spirit of George or George R. R. Martin's books. Yes, and if, if I can add on yeah. to that really quickly, he said very publicly that this is inspired by the War of the Roses, a right. real historical event. If people aren't familiar with the War of the Roses, what basically happened was the House Tudor came out yep. of that. This um, sort of middle of the road house up jumped and we got a new dynasty, so I'm assuming that that's what we're, we're leading towards mm. something kind of like that. Yeah, yeah. And it, it, what that looks like. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And it'll be a great swerve and that's what George R. R. always does. Mm -hmm. He swerves you one way or another and reminds you of the brutality uh, that is inherent in the world. Yeah. And when power is involved, it isn't all like, uh, you know, nice. It's very much more uh, difficult and, and hard to be a leader. And the decision you have to make sometimes can be very difficult mm -hmm. for you to carry as a human being and for other people to understand. Yep. So I love that about Game of Thrones. And I hope they don't lose that and do fan service. If they do fan service, I think that's the worst way to stick the I landing agree. is fan and service. And it's sunk series before. Look at yes. Sherlock. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, God. Yeah, right. Good point. All right. Our last question here. It comes from John Pierce. He writes, Hello, Outlaw and amazing guest. My grandfather just recently passed away at 97 years young. Our condolences, John. And Good run, though, 97. Absolutely, 97. Uh, and was a World War II vet serving in several battles in Europe. My question for you is, what is your favorite scene or had the biggest impact on you from a World War II movie? Look forward to hearing from you. Stay sweaty. Ashley. Yes. This World War II movie is a tough question <laughs> okay. for me. All right. Um, because honestly, my favorite right now, my favorite movie about any big conflict is the Peter Jackson documentary "They Will Not Grow Old." Oh yeah. Uh, which is very moving. That's World War One. Mm -hmm. um, I really love the Canadian film Passchendaele. That's also World War One. Mm. Um, it's tough to not defer right to something like Schindler's List. Yeah. Um, because it is so impactful, it is so beautiful, and that scene at the ending, we've seen it now parodied on like The Simpsons and mm -hmm. Saturday Night Live because it is so epic. And if you can watch that movie and not wind up in tears, I mean, uh, Sophie's Choice, the scene with the choice at yes. the end comes to mind, that's very epic. Um, What's the um, David Niven movie? Oh, Bridge on the River Kwai. Yes. yes. Um, that, I mean, that's really tough. Mm. What comes to mind for you? Well, the bridge on the river Kwai is certainly my number one choice. Oh, good. <laughs> uh, I think because of because of that story, and mm -hmm. you have like conflicting approaches to war. You have very proper British things, the British mentality of trying to do the right thing and be proper and respectful. And you have the Japanese who are doing what they're doing mm -hmm. here in war. And at the end, uh, and spoil well, spoiler alert, I guess, but yeah. like at the end, Niven realizes what has finally realizes mm -hmm. what he has done. And uses his last ounce of life to finally do the right thing at the end of the movie. Yeah. And that breaks me in half every time because he's such a good man that you your heart breaks for him trying to understand what's happening. And then finally, he figures it out. And when he does, it's literally at the last second. Mm -hmm. And it's fantastic in that I way. I think he's uh, an underrated actor. Oh, yes. Uh, unfortunately. Thoroughly. So go back and see his old British stuff uh, and go back and see his version of uh, what was the one with Tom, uh, the lady killer. Yes. His version of Lady Killers is absolutely fantastic. Uh, I would say Saving Private Ryan, that moment where he is dying, Tom Hanks is dying, and says to Matt Damon's character, to Ryan, to Ryan uh, earn this. Mm -hmm. That moment has always affected me uh, because that is in essentially the older generations always telling the younger generations, earn what we've given you, earn and do something different, mm -hmm. leave a legacy for the next generation behind. That's always affected me. And if there's anything that honors the service of the World War II mm -hmm. uh, people is that they try to 
to stop evil so that the world could be better going forward. So. I actually think the most impactful scene in a, in a, a combat movie for mm. me is from Black Hawk Down. Oh, and yeah. it's Morgan with uh, Nikolai Kosterwaller, a Game mm. of Thrones alum, um, when the two snipers, when they basically go out fighting yes. and then you get the title card at the end that lets you know what happened to them because they decide to go out like heroes and mm -hmm. those two guys could have left but they stay with their buddy who's injured and like that makes me cry every time. Yeah, yeah it's very powerful <laughs> stuff. Yeah. Uh, all right, well, thanks Thanks everybody for watching this episode of Collider Mailbag. We really appreciate you taking time on this Sunday as you prep for Game of Thrones. And maybe you're one of the two people that don't prep for Game of Thrones today. Go on, then enjoy your <laughs> nice free Sunday and enjoy social media having it all spoiled for you because yeah. you don't care. Uh, but tonight we will have a another review uh, right after the, the episode uh, plays on the East Coast. We will do our review here. Uh, Ashley Victoria Robinson, myself, Dennis Singh, and Haley Fouch talking about it and breaking down what happened in there. Don't forget to look for that later on on Collider. Uh, I want to thank Ashley Victoria Robinson for stopping by. Ashley, where can they find you for all your social media stuff and the work you're doing? You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Ashley V. Robinson. The V is very important. Ashley Robinson is a WNBA player. I don't want to fight for SEO. You can find my podcast, Geek History Lesson, at geekhistorylesson.com. And we're doing a live event yeah. in Los Angeles with a lot of cool Collider and uh, MCU alums. So check that out. The link to tickets and info is pinned at the top of my socials. There you go. Uh, and of course, what the throne podcast that happens Heck every yeah. every week with Dennis Zhang here on the Collider Podcast channel. All right, thanks everybody. You can follow me at the Roca says on Twitter and on Instagram. And of course, remember to look for the callouts for these questions on social media. We put them on Twitter and on Instagram. Send those questions in. Put that hashtag Collider Mailbag so it makes it easy for me to find. And you can email us, mailbag at Collider.com. Really appreciate it. And thanks to everybody mm -hmm. who's been sending these great uh, uh, comments and compliments to how the show is going. We really, I really appreciate it as I'm building this thing more and more. And there'll be call-outs for more people to come on the show, just like the great Ashley Victoria Robinson and other people <laughs> as well, to have fun answering your questions from the Collider Video fans. All right, that's enough for me. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday. We'll talk to you soon on another episode of Collider Mailbag. Thank you.